experiment uh, in our laboratory we have done experiment uh, already explained like, uh, again explaining uh, thing is good let us see. So, in our experiment uh, what we have done we have pump here ok and this is delivery pipe suction pipe when fluid is coming there it will be delivered. So, before uh, switching on we fill the tank then what we do you open all the exit valves or uh, delivery side there will be no restriction no valve will be there ok. So, that time you get certain flow rate and you note down your pressure or head developed ok the 7 pressure will be giving. So, that time pressure will be lowest level because there is no restriction at the delivery side. Now, slowly you close the delivery valve. So, when you are closing delivery valve your flow rate will be little bit reduced and pressure also will be developed ok it will be showing pressure. So, you get HQ curve like this ok and if you can get your shaft speed and motor torque. So, then you can get efficiency also here and your power consumption curve also here. So, it uh, uh, and power curve power or system curve also you can get and when you are doing experiment uh, some uh, precaution you have to take for example, single person should not do handle the machine two person must be there when you are handling then some other thing is that no electrical component should be open uh, everything must be insulated properly and do not close the exit valve completely. Uh, uh, if uh, HQ curve is becoming like uh, up to 80 percent reached that is ok, but if you are trying to com uh, close completely there may be over uh, loading on motor. So, that may be disaster for your system. So, whenever you are going for experiment you should be careful you should take all the safety precautions and you should go for uh, testing uh, the pumping system ok. Ok, so impeller type this is closed impeller I told ok. This is closed impeller means front plate is there back plate is there. Now, if I remove front plate so this is called open impeller. So, one plate must be there a back plate front plate if I remove that will be open impeller. So, for example, this one almost open impeller because I remove front plate ok. Uh, so, it is good uh, when if you have suspended particle suspended particle if it is going through this uh, small channels it can block this whole path. So, closed impeller will have difficulty if you have suspended particle, but if you have open impeller life will be beautiful for sandy and other debris are there ok. And uh, closed impeller it is good for lighter weight no sand is there and it can develop very higher amount of head also. In some cases uh, people will uh, make semi open impeller. So, half portion of the impellers will be open and half portion will be closed ok. So, you should remember the different types of impellers are there and application also dif um, different and for oil industry especially submersible pumping application it will be closed impeller open impeller do not use we assume that there is no big uh, particles which will be coming and blocking the whole path small particles sand particle will be there because sand control system already there in place. So, that will be allowing smaller particles so that will not block our system, but if sand is getting deposited continuously in the bottom hole. So, that may be problem because that will be blocking everything actually not only impeller ok. But for uh, let us say slurry transportation and other application um, you can use uh, open impeller or semi open impeller type uh, centrifugal pump. Another centrifugal pump is the screw impeller uh, screw impeller actually basically axial type system. So, you can get very high flow rate and your efficiency level also will be very high for screw impellers. Uh, centrifugal pump uh, I already discussed that and you should remember this terms actually it is a rotodynamic or velocity pump uh, you are creating lots of velocity right then you are developing pressure. Mechanical device uh, it is transferring fluid by centrifugal action prime movers or motor gives energy to the impeller how you through one shaft impeller rotates adds kinetic energy to the fluid the velocity gets converted into pressure energy casing or diffuser of volume develops pressure main component impeller casing suction pipe strainer of food valve delivery pipe, but in, in our subsurface application we do not have food valve and strainer, but for surface application we may have this strainer and food valve and delivery pipe means actually we are we are having tubing suction pipe also actually tubing. So, through tubing because it is already inside tubing. So, 
upper side tubing, lower side tubing, actually upper side means uh, delivery side, lower side means suction side actually. Okay, single stage pump or multi stage pump. So, head already you know like uh, normally centrifugal pump point we will really explain, we say in terms of head, although we say pressure, this much of PSI pressure developed, but to understand easily they will say uh, 10 meter head, 20 meter head means how long fluid column can be uh, raised from the pump uh, level or fluid level to the uh, tank level. And speed, uh, centrifugal pump normally speed will have 700, 1400 and ESP normally 3000 or 3600 rpm will be there ok. So, head normally it will be meter of or meter of H2O or fit of H2 ok. Uh, so, oil industry normally they will be using fit but normal application we use meter term. Speed uh, normally 3600 rpm ok and power normally we say in horsepower term how much horsepower it is consuming and flow rate we say GPM, GPM and you can convert to your BPD or BPB barrel per day also. <coughs> now, you see the right side picture, this is also from our paper Adam and all, uh, I was also co-author, my student, he has done the one research on ESP electric centrifugal pump, submersible pump. So, they are, uh, I said it will have multiple stages, multiple stages like this, just open one impeller, okay. This is bigger impeller, you can see everything in clearly, but here this one if you see properly, I hope it is visible in camera, uh, there is impeller I, this is impeller I, okay. impeller I fluid is entering and it is taking turn radial direction and it is exiting from these holes, okay. there are holes, I, I, I hope you can see this one, this is impeller I, there are small very small holes, you cannot see most probably and fluid is entering here exiting here ok, exiting here. So, it will be rotating at very high speed, how it will be rotating? Shaft will be here, shaft will be rotating it ok. When shaft is rotating, fluid will be entering through I and it will be exiting ok. When it is exiting, you need volute or some other mechanism. Here I have one diffuser mechanism, this white portion is diffuser ok. Diffuser, what will it do? If I, this is impeller, this is impeller I, I already told, impeller I, I think you can see clearly in camera and I will be putting impeller here, ok. Now, this is one stage. So, stage means stage uh, impeller plus diffuser, ok. So, impeller and diffuser, diffuser means this is also actually volute you can say in other term. So, what it is doing when impeller is giving high velocity fluid, it will be coming out, coming out and it will enter from the top, ok. I cannot remove this diffuser, it will enter from the top of the diffuser, ok. Diffuser from the top it will be entering, then it will go through the path, inside path is there, then it will be exiting from the opposite side, ok. So, it is like opposite impeller you can say indirectly ok. Impeller increasing speed, this is decreasing speed ok. This is not giving any energy to the impeller ok. There must be some small amount of losses, but this is not giving energy to fluid. Only impeller is giving energy to fluid because the impeller is rotating at very high speed. So, that is why impelling or giving energy to the fluid. Diffuser not giving energy, diffuser only reducing velocity increasing pressure. Okay, so this is first stage my of my impeller diffuser combination called stage or first stage. So if I draw this one, you see the right side picture. I'll put uh, this one. This is my impeller. Okay, right side picture. You see, this is my impeller. Okay, this is my impeller. Okay. This is not showing completely radially, just to explain uh, some rough drawing has been done. So, impeller is like this, this is uh, my eye. So, eye is placed like this, ok, like this. In picture, you, you match this one, eye is here, it is here. Now, from eye, fluid is turning almost radially towards axis. So, who will do that? I have my brother, 
diffuser okay so diffuser will be taking fluid high velocity fluid reduce velocity delivering to here so diffuser is here okay so let's say let's assume one bar pressure okay so after exiting from first stage stage 1 right after exiting from first stage if i have let's say five bar pressure is developing so after exiting from first stage it will be six bar right six bar then after from second stage six plus five or let's say inlet pressure if i say relatively zero relative to atmosphere right so then it is five bar then next stage 10 bar next stage 15 bar next stage 20 bar so whole impeller is producing 20 bar pressure i am assuming first imp so an impeller how much pressure it will be developing so it will be depending on your impeller design diameter and many other factors may be possible okay uh, but if i have one stage let's say five bar or ten bar whatever fiber 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 okay so it is depending 20 uh, 20 bar pressure if i want to go for 100 bar pressure then again you have to add one two three four five okay so one impeller one diffuser is creating one stage multiple stages is creating multi-stage centrifugal pump okay or electric submersible pump and what will happen this is shaft where is your shaft shaft is here shaft is here and fluid is flowing through this path it is going again it is turning again going impeller turning again impeller turning again exiting okay so although although it is shown like it is going like this but actually it will be turning three dimensional so three dimensional showing is very difficult this that's why this picture is drawn in simplified form because if i see this impeller impeller when actually fluid entering it is not going like this or like this it is going turning it is turning again going again it will be turning so every time there will be turning so fluid will be turning like this okay turning rotating turning rotating so that rotation lots of uh, flow turning will be there but actual approximating going radial 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 so we can assume like fluid is going like this okay please uh, shaft is here so fluid is going 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 like this okay but actually actually fluid will be going like this again uh, so complex flow fissure and if you uh, ask any turbo machinery people they say that fluid flow situation is the most complex in the turbo machinery system all about the whatever flow phenomena is there uh, atmospheric uh, flow your human body flow blood flow anything so turbo machine flow is the most complex flow situation because this turb these blades are rotating you don't see but for example air compressor design optimization or uh, turbine you don't see fluid flow but you calculate okay so and most flow complex flow situation is there in the turbo machine flow so this is called the turbo machinery turbo machinery is rotating machinery and uh, yeah two term i forgot to explain you one of the pump one is the turbine okay you should you should remember that one okay so pump is actually it is taking electrical energy giving fluid energy okay electric or any other form of mechanical energy to fluid and turbine fluid to electric right so fluid to power generation power to fluid uh, so pump means like you have propeller propeller what are you doing you are delivering fluid actually ship propeller so when you are delivering fluid that will be a category of pump actually turbine turbine means you are taking fluid you are taking energy from fluid so gas turbine steam turbine those are actually turbine wind turbine 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 means it's taking energy from fluid and you are producing rotation torque and power electricity but when you are talking about your fan 
fan is driving fluid your popular is driving fluid actually those are category ca can be categorized as a pump uh, but all together it will be calling as a uh, turbo machine okay now how this fluid pressure is getting developed this is also taken from the same paper uh, you see this 12000 pressure to 20000 23000 no 2.3 uh, 235000 pressure is increasing okay uh, so this is impeller you can see impeller this is diffuser so from impeller pressure is going up 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 diffuser is very high pressure right this picture is showing a diffuser is having very high pressure so that means diffuser is increasing pressure okay so diffuser function is not to give extra any extra energy it will just take energy from the fluid and it will convert uh, velocity to pressure impeller only giving energy to the fluid okay Uh, so, some laws normally used affinity law if you want to change impeller diameter or you want to change impeller speed. So, the formula will be that flow rate, flow rate Q uh, d dia and n speed and power, breakhouse power or BHP. So, uh, flow rate, let us say initially it was Q1 and you change the diameter to D1. So, form, the formula is that Q1 divided by Q2 equals D1 divided by D2. So, it is proportional Q proportional to D and Q proportional to N also ok, Q proportional to N also. So, if you are changing speed flow rate also will change and what about head? So, head proportional to D square ok or N square. So, head uh, if you are changing speed uh, head uh, will be square of that speed and BHP also changing with uh, but DH BHP is cubic power cubic power of D uh, not D square D cube. So, just you should remember uh, and NQ ok. So, D and almost uh, relevant uh, same way uh, is changing uh, the BHP Q H changing same way as D and N ok. Uh, when power you are changing it will be power of Q of D ok. This is called affinity law and when you are applying for affinity law say you are changing diameter or anything. So, uh, some experts say like maximum 20 percent you can change actually if you are going for more than this may equation may not be valid. And next term is uh, NPSH, NPSH or net positive suction head. Uh, whenever you have any pump, let us say we have a pump here, okay. This is prime over, prime, okay, prime mover, uh, and it will be delivering. This is pump, impeller I, this is pump, okay. So, pump will be delivering fluid, and you are getting fluid from here, okay. So, what is happening your pump at lower level than your uh, tank water level right. So, that means your tank is helping to fill your pump ok and if atmospheric if normal water you are using normal atmospheric pressure most probably this pump will be working ok ok. But if you have lots of bends or sharp corners or narrow suction pipe say friction loss will be there if you have suction pipe very narrow or pipe is having very high friction or fluid is having very high viscosity this that case friction loss will be very high pressure drop will be very high bend loss will be there some fittings will be there curves will be there so in that case your pressure drop will be high so in that case maybe suction pressure you need like say 3 meter head and you, you are giving already 10 meter okay but because of friction actual 10 meter will not be available 10 meter will be going down because friction loss and other thing so, 3 meter required if you are getting more than 3 meter head actually up finally, then your pump will be ok. But your 3 meter required and finally, pressure becoming less than 3 meter then pump will not work because it will be cavitating your net positive suction head will not help you to pump. So, NPSH there are two type NPSH A 
another will be NPSH R. Okay, NPSH means available NPSH. NPSH may required. Required who will say uh, how much required? Pump company. Okay, when pump company developing any uh, pump, so they will be testing how much NPSH or net positive suction head. So the full form also you should know. Net positive suction head. Net. Net positive suction head. So how much net positive suction head is required for your pump? The company will tell. Okay, I need my pump will be requiring three meter head. In at inlet pressure, if you are not maintaining that much of pressure, then your pump will be cavitating or there will be some problem. Okay, then as an engineer, your task is to read that document and you have to ensure that your net positive suction head is not falling below that required required NPSH. Okay, so NPSH available, it is your task, your task as an engineer. Okay, your implementation engineer, so you should make uh, available this much. Okay, and if you are not maintaining, your pump will fail. Uh, inlet pipe. Okay, now what is this picture? Yes, this picture is taken from my own paper actually. Sometime back I published in some popular article. So from there, total inlet head. Uh, okay, NPSH available is say this one. Okay. If no losses is there, then total head is there. For example, Z. Okay, in this left side picture, a uh, picture A is showing Z. Z is saying total head available. But because of losses, losses can be like friction. Friction losses will be there. And then bend, fitting. If any other restrictions are there at inlet pipe, uh, viscosity, viscosity is friction related then there will be losses. So, after losses how much pressure available at the inlet? If you put uh, one pressure gauge at inlet, so pressure gauge should show okay this much of pressure is available for me, uh, uh, available with me. So, then you have to decide okay my pump can run in this pressure. Okay. So, NPSH available say this one, but NPSH required, required is this one. So, that means life is beautiful. But in certain situation your NPSH available is lower than this one. So, to run a pump, uh, pump running properly, NPSH A must be NPSH R. Okay. So, you have to make more money available than you spend, otherwise, uh, otherwise you cannot survive, right? So, you have to earn more. So, you have to learn pumping systems. Uh, NPSH uh, available when you are making, so you have to give some margin. Let's say company is saying 3 meter you keep NPSH, so better you make 5 meter uh, make available, so that if there is any change in any condition, let's say inlet blockage or something, still it will not reach to 3 meter. If it is reaching 3 meter, then maybe cavitation and other problem will come. So, better you keep you give some margin and keep a little bit higher NPSH then your uh, system will be okay. In some cases your entry pipe will be uh, connected to a tank with higher location. Sometime entry pipe or suction pipe will be located at very lower level. For example, uh, loss of agricultural application that pond location, water level location will be lower and pump location will be higher. Okay. So, if very high location they have put more than 10 meter height, so definitely will be cavitating. Okay. But if it is same level is there, normally there is agriculture and other application, the cavitation will not be there. But for centrifugal pump, the centrifugal pump uh, NPSH sometime requirement will be like 75 psi pressure or 5 bar. So, in that uh, what they do, they will be putting some extra pump called inducer. ESP should have one inducer. Okay. So, it, inducer will, it will assist, uh, it will assist in adding NPSHA.
it will assist in adding NPSHA, uh, but it will not give any extra head to uh, to the main impeller. Just it will assist. Okay, it is a helper pump. It is called simple type pump actually. It will be connected to uh, same shaft on uh, as in USB, but it will give extra pressure at the su suction so that your very high suction pressure requirement will be alleviated.